I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition Side Quest Central. Did you guys see that? That was amazing! Well, whatever. It counts. Let's go ahead and bypass the communication terminal and end this little side quest. Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to yet another episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty right here on Missile Dino. That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Mass Effect 2 video. Uh, we're going to pick it up where we left off, my friends, and we are going to try to tackle as many of these side quests as possible and get these done. And then I think we're going to be dealing with a bunch of others. So the first place that we're going to want to go to is uh, is going to be the Minos Wasteland. We're going to kind of work our way across the galaxy and 100% these systems as we go. So we are going to go ahead. We're going to head to the Minos Wasteland. Now, these, these, these episodes, they gotta happen, my friends. We gotta get them done. So let's do it. Let's get them over with. Let's explore all of the systems that we possibly can. And like I said, we're not 100% it's we have we have so many resources that we don't really need that many but here on Akitas we can find home to the infamous iron canyons it has reddish iron oxide dust which sounds really cool the funds are then used to maintain a research station so we did find an anomaly on this rich planet here so let's go ahead and see what we can do to help out Let's go ahead and see what's going on on Akitas here. Something on our sensors. Surface scans report potential alien signatures from within the mining facility. Very interesting. Let's go ahead and scan this, and we will investigate the abandoned mine. Now, of course, this is a rich planet, so might as well grab a few resources while we're at it. And let's go ahead and land on Akitas. Now, I recommend for this episode to, uh, or for this mission, the Abandoned Mind, to take whoever can take a ton of punishment and dish it out. So we are actually going to be bringing our boy Grunt, and we're actually going to be taking Zaid with us as well. And I think the two of them are going to really, really help kick some butt, let me tell you guys. Zaid with his concussive shot and his Inferno grenade being incredibly useful and Grunt being Grunt. Uh, this is going to be an easy mission for us. Get ready, friends, because you are going to be facing a ton, a ton of husk in this fight. We're not going to worry about uh, a heavy weapon. And I actually suggest not using one because we'll actually be able to get some free credits by not using it. <laughs> that was I love that all right let's go ahead let's get ready it looks like we're gonna have to take down a ton there's a container over here that we can check out we get 2,250 credits why would Huss be here in this abandoned mine I wonder I guess we better get ready because this is gonna mean close quarters and a whole lot of enemies. Guys, I'm so excited. Let's go ahead and do it. In fact, let's actually switch to the Matic Heavy Rifle. Let's break that out, and let's get ready to show some Huss who's boss when they mess with us. Again, don't forget, them leaving the ground will instantly eliminate them, and we no longer have to deal with that. So we'll kind of spread out as much damage as we can here with the Inferno. Go ahead and concussive when we can, taking them out. And you can see, I mean, who cares about Huss when you can do that? Huss are like the least dangerous enemies for a Vanguard. Honestly, I believe that. We can go ahead and grab that Iridium. We can also read this data pad. If you're reading this, get the hell out of this place now. You know what? No. We got more Huss to deal with, my friends. We're going deeper, as they say. Into this, we'll find another thing of Iridium as a Huss drops before us. Go ahead and eliminate it with a quick charge. Grab this Iridium. And oh my gosh, that's right, we're even dealing with some abominations. Can you believe it? We'll go ahead and charge this husk. Like I said, it doesn't matter. These guys die so easily. A vanguard can take these down like they're nothing. And we will be facing a ton of husk in this mission, my friends. No less 
than 75 Hus. Go ahead and take down this abomination that drops down at the chest that we were trying to grab. Taking down these guys as well. We're going to go ahead and charge this one. And then just go ahead and melee him to death. No big deal. You can see how absolute little damage we take from us. I mean, it does absolutely nothing to us and our shields. Because don't forget, we also take that reduced, that reduced damage. So we can just all day, my friends, all day, us or nothing. So easy, easy mission. Get that 560 Iridium there and continue on. But what happened? Why are there so many Hus? More importantly, what's in this locker? Hopefully get something good from that. Which we did, 1,050 credits. Hear more husk, uh, I mean, that's that's just gonna be, it's actually very creepy. More iridium that we can pick up, another 400. The sounds, the sounds, it's so creepy. Go ahead and charge these, get these guys out of here. And we can actually find mine logs and a med station that we can pick up, getting away from that before it explodes. Like I said, not a huge deal. Unfortunately, a little bit stuck there. But again, look how little damage they're actually doing to this. We can so we can just be so cheesy and be totally, totally fine. Literally not even needing to worry about these enemies as we were able to kill them. There's also these mine logs that we can read. See what happened. Alien machine was discovered. Smithson's men dug out some kind of alien machine like nothing I ever saw. Looks like some squints over at Alanis Risk Control are willing to part with a ton of credits to get their hands on one of these things. Cooper and Jorgensen say they saw that damned alien thing glowing and hell if I'm going near it to prove them wrong. I don't get paid enough to expose myself to weird alien artifacts. Cooper, Jorgensen, and them ain't doing so well. Not feeling so good myself. Stay near the machine, feel better. Not sure I want to let Alanis folk take it. I think it should stay right here with us. A machine that turned them into husk. Indoctrination, perhaps? Shepard, I detect a powerful alien signature deep within the mines. It appears the device is the source of the husks. It is likely that destroying it would stop them. Well, sounds like something we'll have to do, but we can also pick up these power cells for 100 credits. And this is what I mean. I mean, these guys, it looks so dangerous because, oh, look at them all charging us, but like, they don't do anything, you know? And our, and our charge is back so quick that we just don't, you know? But there, it is it is a lot of us. And I do feel like if you're a different class, if you're something that doesn't really have the defensive capabilities and like the recharge and everything, you can, it is very easy to get overwhelmed here, for sure, for sure. But for a Vanguard, these missions are great. Just, just any time you fight us in general, it's just a good time. That's it. Then you also have a Krogan that's charging with you, and it's just, it's just fun. Go ahead and... Look at how many there are. There's so many. But like I said, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. We can charge out of it when they start doing this. It's just not a big deal. So it's like... This is whatever you want to do. You can defeat these guys. Anyways, we're going to head in here. See if we can help deal with whatever's going on here. We'll actually see right away this very dangerous. Apparently, these guys are just going to keep coming. We'll see that there's a little bit of a bomb here. Now, before we set off these bombs that are in this room, we actually want to make sure that we get as much as we can, like bypass this locker here that we can do because we're going to want to make sure we get everything we possibly can from this mission. And there's also a second power cells crate that we can grab before that. So let's go ahead and grab this med kit. And we were able to get them to stop spawning. And the way that we did that is actually by... So the way that I did that is I blew this up and then I reloaded my save and the hus actually stopped spawning at that point, which allows us to then be able to kind of loop without dealing with that. And we can grab those. So a little bit weird of a way to do it. Then the husk will respawn after it. It's just it's just an easier way, I think, of, of making sure that you get everything from this mission. Because it is actually fairly easy to not get everything. Now we can go ahead and actually destroy all this. And call it a day. Throw it away.
And for that, we will level up. We are now level 25. We got 125 experience for that. Destroy the Reaper indoctrination device. And we'll leave with 7,500 uh, 7, credits and 2,000 iridium. And just like that, the abandoned mine mission is done. We are almost done with all of the in seven missions that we can find in this game. In fact, only a few more remain. Of course, the ones that do remain are pretty big ones. So we'll finish scanning Vortis and head to the nearby system of Castus, where we can find the incredibly rich planet of Temeraris, which has a ton of resources, if that's something you still need. Now, I do recommend beating this game when you finish and you and you have that very last save that you're gonna import into Mass Effect 3. You only need to have 300,000 minerals to get the max amount that you can, so it's not that big of a deal. It's super easy to get. And we can also find the planet Invictus, which was actually a great home to dextro amino acid based life like Turians or uh, or even um, Quarians could have lived there as well because they're, they're very similar. And in fact, this place w seems so great and then it just fell to crap and ended up not being a not being a great a great spot. And in fact, Torians now have a new name for this place, uh, or a new phrase because of Invictus. A house in an Invictus jungle is a modern Turian phase for an idea that seems like a good idea, but only to be to the one who came up with it. So, uh, not the best place to be on Invictus. However, it is worth mentioning that Invictus does have a rich deposit of Element Zero. So if you need that, you need to retrain your squad, this is the place you want to come to. And with that, we are done with the Minos Wasteland. We need to head back to the Mass Relay and explore our next system, which is going to be the Eagle Nebula. Let's head there and see what we can complete and what new in seven missions are waiting for us. And of course, we need to scan everything because of course we do. We've already done a mirror, so the next system we're gonna head to is Relic. So, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by burnout and anxiety. Uh, it has been so long since I did the first part of this episode that uh, it is now no longer sweater weather. So, anyways, let's jump into it. We are heading to the relic system. At least I think that's where uh, I think that's where we we're doing because we are trying to finish up as many of these side quests as possible. So we're gonna head to relic, and mostly what we're doing here is making sure that we can get 100% completion by scanning all of these planets, even though I know that there's not a side quest that we can actually do in Relic. So let's go ahead and let's scan everything. The first place that we'll get to is actually Praying Mouth. It is a ship-killing enigma, like the Bermuda Triangle of the Terminus systems, which is pretty cool due to the large number of ships lost when attempting to discharge their drive cores in Praying Mouth. The Relic system highly recommends using First Land's complementary discharge. I just think that's dope. On the planet Beach Thunder, we can find another minus minute minute mineral I'm out of practice mineral rich uh, beach thunder what a name these these planet names are amazing uh you'll find a ton of iridium on beach thunder but no element zero or anything that actually might be a little bit more useful closer to the sun we can find the planet of fitful current I love these names so much. Uh, uh, yet another rich planet where no element zero it will actually be found, but we can si find some palladium and yet again, some more iridium. Closest to the sun, we can find murky water that seems to have a ton of platinum here. Uh, yet another rich planet for you to get as many resources as you possibly could use. And hidden in the asteroid field here, we can find another little tiny planet called Rough Tide, also a rich planet. And let's see what that has which has more iridium, platinum, and palladium. Like, like a whole lot of, of platinum, actually, on this planet. And now that relic is 100% done, we're going to head to the a moon system here, where I believe we actually do have yet another in seven mission that we can find. In a moon, we will find four different planets that we can check out. And on the planet Neath, immediately, we will find out that this actually has an anomaly on it. Also, a little bit about this is during the Anur Rebellions, Neath was staging ground for Eclipse ships and was the site of their first defeat, which is uh, pretty cool that there was actually like a war with Eclipse mercenaries. So we can go ahead and get some resources from the planet Neath, but also we can start looking for this anomaly. So let's go ahead, send out another probe. Something on our sensors. Surface scans indicate wreckage of a merchant freighter, configuration unknown, damage to ship catastrophic, detecting movement, but no signs of organic life. Well, let's go ahead and land and tackle yet another in seven mission. We are approaching the end of all of them. So for this mission, I highly recommend bringing Tally because, well, 
she just does really well anytime you have to fight mechs. And guess what? We're gonna be fighting a lot of mechs. And actually, I recommend bringing Garrus as well. I just like having a party of Garrus and Tally. It makes me feel good inside to bring them. And we're actually going to end up putting some points just for this mission into AI hacking. Don't worry, we'll change this later because now that we have access, to the Shadow Broker Station, we can change this. We're gonna bring AI hacking because I think it's going to be very, very useful for what we're about to encounter. I'm also gonna go ahead and switch to the uh, arc projector here because I think that is also going to be useful. So let's land and see what's happened to this abandoned merchant freighter. One of the things that I love is Sandstorm. Sandstorm. From the northwest. Proceed with caution. But I also just really like the side quests that you get in Mass Effect 2. I feel like they kind of round out the world a little bit better than, definitely better than Mass Effect 1, which we've mentioned several times. So there is a ton of loot as we approach on the far end of this field. And you'll notice that there is cover literally everywhere because this is a very aggressive mission. A very aggressive mission, my friends. In fact, if you're playing an infiltrator, GG, you won. You just, you, honestly, you won the entire mission. Grats, uh, way to pick a class. So, let's go ahead and let's look at the stat, uh, system status report. Right away, we're going to find out that something went wrong with this VI, it seems, and it was locked out by the captain. The captain completely locked everything down. The shields were totally fine. Uh, life support was returning to safe levels. Something was going on that wasn't life support, that wasn't shields. Something was going on potentially with the cargo. Uh, a contagion may have spread out on board, so he shut down the VI because it, so it seemed like maybe there was an issue with that. Right over here, we can go ahead and grab damaged mech parts, 1,500 credits. I would highly recommend my fellow nerds uh, grab this platinum as well to grab all of the items that you possibly can here before you proceed to the very end and interact with a beacon. Once you interact with that beacon, it is going to be the end of this side quest and you're going to be stuck. You'll see. Anyways, we can grab another 1500 credits over there and we want to keep an eye out for refined platinum as we proceed down. There is uh, this left path or this right path and that left path over there. So we just want to keep an eye out making sure that we're grabbing all of the items that we can and also trying to learn more about what's happened to this this merchant freighter and everybody on board because uh oh they don't seem to be kicking if there's no organic life down here right here we can find an evacuation order we are on a collision course and losing systems fast report to the escape pods immediately this is not a drill sounds like they couldn't evacuate in time maybe something happening with the escape pods themselves doesn't seem great. Over here, we can find the navigator's log. Captain, short-range sensors just went offline, and I'm locked out of helm control. The VI is reporting malfunctions all over the ship. Very interesting. Seems like, well, things did not go well for these people. We grabbed the platinum that was over here, so we got everything that we could get on both the right and left side here. Uh, remember that there are these two platforms. There's also a hill up here that you can potentially use uh, because obviously this is going to be one hecka of a battlefield. We can grab this med kit here for 100 credits. And we can also find uh, over here 750 credits worth of salvaged mechanical parts. We can also find this refined platinum, 420 more, blaze it. And we can also check out, finally, the shipping manifest, and maybe we'll find out what actually happened. Reflective mech armor X6378, 14 crates of it. We also found that this merchant vessel had 180 Loki mechs and one Ymir mech. 180 Loki mechs and one Ymir mech. My friends. <laughs> oh. If that's not foreboding, I don't know what is. So it looks like there's stuff over here. There's not. I don't know why it's there. It makes me sad. It makes me wanna makes me wanna grab stuff and hope for items, but there's nothing. Over here we can find more power cells, though we're probably not going to use any. We're especially not gonna use any right now, so we can grab that. And before you interact with this signal transmitter, look at that in the background. It reminds me actually of Andromeda, Mass Effect 4, technically. Uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, which, by the way, if you've never played that game, I highly recommend it. It's actually very good and unfortunately uh, has a bad rep for no reason. I really enjoyed it. I streamed the entire game. We platinumed it. Um, it was a wonderful, wonderful, or I think we platinumed it. It was a wonderful game, actually. Um, it's different than Mass Effect, but not different 
it's still great. Anyways, the security report. So, that doesn't actually make sense. If the mechs were self-destructing, well, the rest of this mission doesn't really check out. So, now that we got everything, we've gotten all of the items that we can, all of the money that we can get, let's go ahead and activate this signal transmitter. Before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and send out our party all the way over here into cover. I'm on it. I'm taking cover. So that they are ready because we, my friends, well, here's the deal. <laughs> Here's the deal. Something that I absolutely love about this mission is there is a ton of different ways to do this. If you are an infiltrator, you win. You can cloak and you can just run through right back to the shuttle. As we press this, we are going to get an unending wave of Loki mechs and a Ymir mech that's going to spawn to take us down. No less than, get this, 181 mechs. If you kill all of them, you win. Mission over. You don't get anything extra. But, hey, you did it. You killed 181 mechs. Good for you. Or, <laughs> if you want to do this a little bit faster, you can be a vanguard and charge through. You can be an infiltrator and cloak. Or you can just proceed past their spawn points and get to the shuttle and leave before you cause, before you have any issues. So, let's go ahead and save here. So, we'll activate the shuttle. And we're going to deal with this in the way that I said we'll show a little bit of a trick that we can do. So, we're going to make sure that Garrus actually has his... Uh, his um, sniper rifle and then we're gonna go ahead and we're actually just gonna take down a couple of these Loki mechs we don't need to take down too many of them just because uh, they don't do too much right now there's only a couple that we'll have to fight but what we really want to do is we want to proceed this way and we actually want to get over here before tally dies now we're gonna go ahead and spawn this drone which is going to get the attention of the Ymir mech we're going to go ahead and run now that the Ymir mech is over there, you can do this as not a vanguard, doesn't really matter. We're going to use the Kodiak as uh, as a, um, as a cover, and then we'll go ahead and return to the Normandy. And there you go, my friends. That is the end of that mission. Barely any combat whatsoever. In fact, we did that so quickly that we didn't even get the shuttle to be like, Oh, it's at 90%, the Sandstorm 90% visibility. It actually gets worse as you get closer. Found no survivors in the MSV Corsica wreckage. Deactivated the Distress Beacon. We gained 125 experience, 7,500 credits, and 2,000 platinum. And we're back on the Normandy. We have a private message at our terminal, so let's go ahead and read that. The MSV Corsica last known docking coordinates. Edie found some information. They were at the Gerard system, Strabo system, Eagle Nebula. Data mining confirms the last reported location of Merchant Freighter, the one we were just at, was at the Gerard system in the Strabo. Uh, the Stra station in the Strabo system. Possibility exists that clues pertaining to the anomaly that caused the mass malfunction of the mechs can be found aboard Gerard station. Very interesting. And in fact, we now have a new in seven mission. If we look at our journal, we have the abandoned research system in the Eagle Nebula under high security lockdown by its resident VI. So it seems like something is going wrong, my friends. But we're gonna go ahead and finish the, all of the scanning that we can do here in the Amun system. And I was wrong, there's five planets in the immune system. And also one of the ones that we wanna look at is Anor, which is a garden world with heavy populations of humans and Batarians. Anor was home to one of the ugliest violations of sapient rights in modern human history. A consortium of corporations, corrupt politicians, fearing Batarian economic competition, passed a resolution that abolished the minimum wage, effectively re-legalizing slavery on a human dominated world. Opponents of the motion quickly turned to activism and violence. A civil war erupted as one side sought to end slavery throughout the system and another, primarily Batarian faction called the Nahesit, sought to keep the slaves they had. The Anura rebellions raged from 2176 to 2178. They, the Batarians had a significant advantage of ships, labor, and weapons, forcing the Anur militias to hire mercenary companies to even the odds. In the end, the abolitionists won out, though at the cost of much of their infrastructure. Though Anur today still has significant natural wealth, it's economically depressed save for the reconstruction industry. Interesting to me that the writers of Mass Effect 2, of course, couldn't have the humans be the ones that wanted the slavery. It was the Batarians. Sure. Sure. And if we scan, it is, of course, a rich mineral world. And, my friends, 
has element zero. Satisfied with our element zero intake, we're going to head to another system that we can find here, the Malagus area, uh, and that will be all that we can find in the Eagle Nebula. Well, we also have Strabo, we know Strabo is where this next one takes place. Now, we only have three planets here in the Malgus system, so let's go ahead and explore these. Including Rill, which Krogan can survive in the heat with the use of a, of a breath mask. All other species should not come here. Large-scale gang warfare, war war warfare is a regular occurrence on Rill, so uh, we should probably shouldn't go here. And we also have the planet Flet, which is actually home to the Blood Pack's Vorcha training and breeding grounds. The thick atmosphere is nearly all nitrogen and lacks oxygen, which poses no hazard to the Vorcha. Of course, it is a mineral-rich planet, so we can find a ton of platinum, palladium, uh, but no element zero, which is really the only resource that we are actively looking for. And finally, with Malgus done, we're going to take a quick little detour to Amir here because we need some more fuel before we make the journey to Strabo or else we won't get back. 90% of the Eagle Nebula completed. This will be the final one that we need. There's a space station here, the Draw station, the abandoned station. We can also find the Antigar, the uh, uh, gas giant that's going to have no natural resources. And Strabo is 50% completed, which means the only other thing that we can go to is the abandoned station. So let's go ahead and hit land on this station. And we're not going to really need to worry about combat here. This is more of a little puzzle more than anything else. Data mining confirms the last reported location of the of Corsica, the merchant that we just found. So something went wrong on the VI here at this abandoned research station that apparently led to it being an issue here. So we're gonna go ahead and bring our head engineer here because I think that's going to be our best bet. And of course, we're gonna bring Garrus as well. Tally and Garrus just make for such a great, just a, it's just a great squad in general. I love the space stations in this game. Something absolutely horrible happened on this space station. And in fact, this reminds me a lot of Alien Isolation, another fantastic game. If you guys have never played it, I highly recommend. So we're going to continue on. It looks like something just awful. We see these bloody bodies everywhere. We can go ahead and read this PDA. Dr. Galwin, at my suggestion, we've cut power to all systems, save critical life support, in hopes that disabling these systems will deny the VI the resources she needs to kill us. This is a temporary solution. We cannot last this out on our own, Dr. Taliesin. Interesting. We can find more bloody bodies, ones that we saw when we pulled up. Welcome. Please proceed to processing. We'll find a door over here, and in that we can find some refined iridium that we can open. We'll find some more iridium here. 600, so that's a thousand already. Unfortunately, finding yet another dead scientist. No clue as to what possibly happened. We can go ahead and restore Dolly power to the docking power area. Restored. Restoring are power. To report to the cargo doors for immediate removal from station. Sounds like the VI does not want us here. Too bad for the VI because we, my friends, Intruder plan on detected. staying. You are not authorized to be in this area. Oh yeah find another PDA here on this dead body. Dr. Gowan, my firm belief is that the VI is paranoid about the possibility of infection. Its current homicidal behavior is likely out of an inflated desire to keep us from shutting it down. I believe that the VI is malfunctioning and that it believes our equipment to be infected by a virus. If we continue to try to shut her down, she will keep trying to destroy us. Maybe our only recourse is to just do nothing and convince her that we're not a threat. Huh. So we can go ahead and try to see if we can activate this hub area. Power outage detected in the station mainframe is locked down for security purposes. So let's head over here first. We can head to this living area, the living quarter. Maybe we can find somebody who might still be alive. In the mess hall here, we're not seeing any items or anything that we can grab. However, there is a PDA that we can read. Attention all docks, we are expecting a shipment of mech parts from the Han Kadar facility. Make sure the VI knows to accept a docking request. Interesting. 
wonder if those were the mechs that we just took out. We go ahead and read that. From the freighter. Knows to accept a docking request. We are expecting a shipment of mech parts from the freighter MSV. So that means that the freighter went down before it came here? Or it did dock here and then left. Ah, what just happened? Continuing on, we can only go through this door here where we can find a med kit for 100 credits because we are not using Unity ever. And looks like that's all we could find here. However, we can restore the power. Living so area speak. power restored. The living area doors have been closed to quarantine a threat to this station. Advise intruders to engage self-destruct procedures to avoid death by starvation. Uh-oh. So it locked us in this room and we have to figure out station control how best to get out of here. In fact, in the Legendary Edition, you can actually see which doors are open now. So we can see that this one is open, but we don't have access to the dorm at all. However, there is a very fast solution. This is normally a puzzle that you can use. You can see this layout. Again, this was added in the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, this floor plan. But we can go ahead and uh, uh, do the leftmost computer there, which is going to enable the door out so we can leave. But as you can see, we'd be stuck because we wouldn't have those doors, right? Uh, and then we can do the right store and that will give us access to everything. So the fastest way is the leftmost door and then the rightmost door. And we can finally head into the dorm here and see if we can find anything else, including a personal locker that we can open for 525 credits. This is just awful. Another personal credit there for 750 and a third for 375 credits. Looks like that's everything that we could find in the dorm. No PDAs on these guys either. It looks like they must have killed themselves so that they wouldn't die from starvation. It looks, in fact, like everybody on this station killed themselves. Continuing out through the mess hall that we were just in. Back All into... Intentionally violating quarantine are requested to exit the station immediately. Now, we can't access this hub area power just yet, but we can head over to the research lab where we can hopefully find a little bit more about this what's going on here. Please leave this station immediately. More importantly, we can find five, uh, 400 iridium and another with 600 iridium. We already have so much. Noticing that this area seems to be where they were working on something, making mechs maybe? Armor? Recent Go ahead and access this. Restored. Now this must be from the reflective armor that we saw. And yet again, we're going to be locked inside. You can see the beams happening. This is the reflective armor that we saw. 14 cases of that, that armor that was sent on the, the freighter. So something is going on. So the way that we're going to do this is we are going to use computer one once. Reflective armor prototype repositioned. Going to use computer two twice. Reflective armor prototype repositioned. Computer three, once. And computer four, three times. Reflective armor prototype repositioned. And this way, it's going to allow us to reflect this beam Testing area back at itself unlocked. and destroying it so that now we can actually All exit. Take this opportunity to leave the station immediately. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be doing that, VI. And we can go ahead and leave the research lab now. And we want to head to the final area that we can, which is engineering over here. We want to be a little bit careful here, actually. And this part can be a little bit dangerous. Plasma venting in progress. Attempting to reach the maintenance controls will most likely result in serious injury or death. We do not want to get hit by that at all. One hit of it will remove our shields. But then also, if we get hit by it again, it will take away all of our health. It's not great. It actually can be kind of challenging to get through this area. Anyways, we got 750 credits from that, or uh, 1350 credits, 750 from that one. And we can also read this PTA and find out, this PDA, find out a positive that the trouble with our VI started after the Corsica docked with us. Taliesin is looking into the VI itself. In the meantime, I need you to go through the logs and find out everything that was on that ship. What could have been on that ship that would cause this to happen. We saw that ship. We saw what was on the shipping log. Very interesting. So we're going to wait for these plasma to deactivate so that we can run on through. We're going to go now that those two are gone. We're actually going to wait here while these go. Unfortunately, they're going to hit our squad mates, but that's actually fine. 
We're going to wait, and then we can run through just like that. Easy enough. We are past the dead, the dead gates, if you will. Running around this plasma once so we don't get hit by that. Sprinting through here as quickly as we can. Finding another dead body, probably someone who tried to shut this down and it didn't work out for them. We're going to go ahead and restore the maintenance area. Our team is going to get back up, which is great. Good for them. Uh, I think we lost some uh, some relationship points with them, however, uh, by killing them. No, it's fine. So, now that that's done, we can continue out of engineering. The plasma is no longer being vented, so we don't have to worry about that. Coming back, looks like we only have one place to go, which is now the main hub area. It's also worth mentioning that while we were running there, you could potentially actually deactivate the plasma by looking at the grates and uh, maybe being able to shut it off. Although it's not entirely possible. Like sometimes it can be possible, sometimes not. Uh, it's it's really hard to get that to re-happen. So it's not a big deal just to run through. Anyways, now we can access the hub area. area power restored. And we can head into these doors. Where we can now... Uh, well, the VI is not going to be able to do that because we have ED. So let's go ahead and let's shut down the VI mainframe, which is going to end the mission Intruder for us. Detected. You are not authorized to be in this area. This is a secure zone. Please leave this station immediately. I regret to inform you that all attempts to defend the station have failed. Shutting down security protocols. Now, if you notice there, when we shut down the VI, its dialogue name actually changes from Station VI to Survivor. And also, the story of this mission has some similarities to the events in 2001 Space Odyssey, where the AI starts killing everybody because they're trying to shut it off. Also, we'll find that several of the bodies inside the station are clothed in uniforms bearing an SR2 shoulder patch, meaning, potentially, they were on the Normandy at some point? I don't know. Doesn't seem right. Anyways, completing that, we have de deactivated the station security, gained 125 experience, 7,500 credits, and 2,000 iridium. There's also a bug while you're doing the research lab, uh, although I don't think that that's actually active in the Legendary Edition, so keep that in mind. Uh, it sometimes can cause your, your game to crash if you're playing on PC, but I don't think that's an issue in the Legendary Edition of this game. Getting back to the Normandy after completing that in seven mission and all of Eagle Nebula now 100% done, we have another message. The source of the virus has been detected on the planet Capic in the Titan Nebula. Data from the quarantine VI at Jara Station indicates that a possible source of the VI virus outbreak is a Khan Kadar facility on the planet Capec. So, sounds like we are going to need to head there now hopefully be able to shut down whatever's going on there. We have a journal now uh, to, let me go ahead and exit so we can actually look at that journal. And we will see that we have a new N7 mission. Uh, uh, investigate the mech facility and shut down their production line. Well, let's go ahead and let's do that next. So that means that we are going to head out of here and head back to the Amir system so that we can use the mass relay to leave the Eagle Nebula, the 100% in Eagle Nebula. What up, baby? And finally, go over there, make sure that we have gas, everything that we need, fuel, you know how it is, road trips and stuff. Which, my friends, means all of these systems on this left-hand side of the galaxy have actually been 100%ed. Every single one that we have over here, which is a beautiful thing to see. But it looks like we need to head up here to the Titan Nebula to disable the infected production line. I also want to point out that in the Pylos Nebula, there has been a crashing ship for a very long time. Those poor people are probably so stressed out. Can't believe that they're crashing. It must not be an emergency because they've been crashing for like 30 hours at this point. Arriving in the Haskins system, we will see that there is two 
things here, just the mass relay and the planet of Quebec. And in fact, there is no other systems that we can explore. So basically, once we go to this system, that is 100% here as well, which you love to see. So ba baked in the fierce heat of a white sun, Quebec is a rocky, waterless world wrapped in a haze of hydrogen and ethane. Uh, so let's go ahead and scan this, which obviously it will be a rich planet, and we will also be able to find the anomaly pretty quickly. Scans have found something. They don't want us to dock here. And I do recommend searching Capec because there is Element Zero and Iridium and other things that we can find, but mostly that Element Zero is going to be so, so good. In fact, because Capec can only be found by doing this quest chain, I would consider this source of Element Zero as one of the perks, one of the unlockables of actually doing this quest line. In fact, this planet is so good that I would consider the entire thing part of the reason why you would come here. So anyways, we found an anomaly. Surface scan detects mech production facility matching the registration parameters of this corporation. Personnel scans report that no living beings are detected. Hagazard scans show a large number of virus infected mechs within the facility, which means, my friends, we are going to head here to shut this down down i recommend bringing somebody with fire abilities shotguns this is all going to be very close range so somebody like uh tally is actually going to be very useful grunt is going to be very useful we are actually going to go ahead and bring a party of grunt and tally with us because they are so strong at close quarter combat tally being able to spawn that that uh that drone that she has will actually allow us to kind of cheese some stuff here now we do have some points that we could put into our boy grunt but we're not going to worry about those too much we're going to go ahead concussive shot is fine with that fortification is not that big of a deal to be honest with you but we're going to go ahead and give him that fortification anyways and we're going to keep the weapon loadout that we had in the previous mission. So let's go ahead and shut down this evil facility. And, I, you know, these, these sequences are so short. Anyways, we will find ourselves outside here. We're going to go ahead and just make sure that our friends have the shotguns that they need. Yeah. And we're also going to equip our own shotgun here, just to make this a little bit easier on ourselves. We're going to approach this very ominous facility here. The, well, let's go ahead and make sure we have incendiary armor, armor, and we're ready to go, because as this door opens, we're actually going to find some mechs that we're going to go ahead, we're gonna charge these. Go ahead and charge them. And we can actually go ahead and open this door, which will get us inside and we don't have to worry about anything um, automatically puts us inside and we don't have to worry about those waves of enemies which is uh pretty handy immediately we will find an asari on the ground dead find a med kit that we can open for 100 credits find a loki mech that seems to be just kind of walking around here oh it exploded well that's good we can bypass this wall safe for a ton of credits 3750 credits are now ours which is beautiful you'll love to see it and we can also go ahead and see this computer here. Attention, recall notice. A new circuit board supplier has issued an immediate recall on the obedience processor. Interesting. The Dr. Rochelle, the director, said that. Just FYI, we lost contact with the Corsica. After you expressed concern, I checked the logs, and indeed, the mechs and parts they picked up contained the recalled OPUs. We know the Corsica was headed for the Jura system, which we've taken care of, but we can't seem to contact them. I hope they're all okay. Emergency situation in progress. Dr. Talarassin says I'm getting reports of mechs coming off our production lines and assaulting workers. Some of them seem to be self-destructing at random, which we just saw. We're looking at a potential facility-wide catastrophe here. Dr. Rochelle has ordered a complete lockdown. You are hereby ordered to seal the production line access corridor from the rest of the facility. It's been an honor working with you. Uh-oh. Well, it seems like they knew exactly what was going on and that they had protocol. Potentially, this is Dr. Talaracin, and we'll find out why I say that really quickly. Coming into this main room here, we're going to find right to our left a data pad from Officer Keith Gamble. Located the Asari Dr. Talaracin in the production line, which was the Asari that was laying on the ground a little bit earlier. She obviously didn't make it. They thought that they secured her, barricaded everything, thought that the warehouse was safe, and unfortunately it wasn't. 
Gamble said he's in the warehouse. It seems pretty empty. I can see the control room just above the storage area. I might need a few minutes, but I'm pretty sure I can get that main production line down. Unfortunately, Gamble was not able to do so, but we ourselves can see it right there. That is the production room. That's where we need to go. You'll see these Ymir mechs actually flying through the air. Lucky for us, we don't have to deal with those. However, what we do have to deal with is when we run over here, we're going to be encountering some Finneris mechs, which naturally, because we're us, we can deal with them super easily. Go ahead and knock this one out and it'll explode. Doesn't really matter. More importantly, we can grab this refined element zero. And then we're going to get into a little bit of a maze area here that can be kind of challenging and, in fact, is a little rough if you're playing Vanguard. So we're going to go ahead and charge this. We're actually going to head to our left here, which is not the way that we need to go, but there is some power cells here that we need to pick up, as well as a Ymir mech or a Loki mech that we need to take down. We're going to go ahead. Unfortunately, like I said, charge sometimes gets straight up busted in here. We can grab this power cells for 100 credits. Of course, if you don't need those, you don't need to run back for them. I just think it's worth grabbing. So we're going to actually continue this way without destroying those, not get caught on this. And if we are able to cheese this, this is a never ending supply of Loki mechs that keep coming down here, but we're actually going to cheese it and just run forward. And we're not really going to have to deal with too many of them as we proceed. As long as we stay safe, we really only have to deal with that initial wave and then we can kind of run through and deal with them as they sort of come at us but they won't really. We'll grab that element zero that we just saw and proceed this way, which is actually exactly where we need to go. I thought I just saw something, but I think it was just the door. You'll notice the Loki mechs aren't really following us anymore. Our friends are actually safe and cover on the other side. So we'll go ahead, we'll open this door and right here we can grab some element zero, which is actually down this ramp, but you don't need to go down the ramp. We'll head up here. We're almost done. Make sure you get all of the items that you possibly can before you interact with this production line shutdown over here. Because once that's shut down, that's it. Mission over, my friends. So let's go ahead and let's shut this baby down. Well, after we hack it, I guess that's fine. Firewall removed. There we go, my friends. We are now done with this plot line. We have shut down the Han Kadar Experimental Mechanics Facility production line on Kapik and deactivated by self-destructing all of the infected mechs. We gained 125 experience, 7,500 credits, and 500 element zero. Look at that, guys. We're cruising. We're gonna go ahead and check. We have no new messages. Thane, of course, still wanting to speak with us because we have a few loyalty missions left. But we'll go ahead, we'll check out the galaxy map, and we will notice that we have no more uh, here in this system. That is it for Capic. Uh, Titan Nebula, 100% completed. However, before we end today's episode, we are going to go ahead and save this crashing ship that we can find in this nebula. We're going to go ahead and explore the entire thing and make sure that we get everything that we possibly can here. So we'll find uh, some planets here that we can go ahead and scan, like Jonas and the planet Isail which if you've played Final Fantasy XIV, what up? And before we deal with the MSV Broken Arrow, we're actually gonna go ahead and explore the Dorada, the Santant, and the Chrysoroi systems. In Dorada, we could find a ton of different planets. And on the planet of Canalis, we can actually find yet another anomaly and also a rich planet. Sensors detecting anomalous weather patterns on the planet's surface, geth activity detected, recommend extreme caution. Before we land on Canalis, though, let's go ahead and explore the rest of the planets that we can find here, like Ciano, which is formed of low-density dens rock. And another mineral-rich planet, of course. With Element Zero, which I highly recommend scanning. You're gonna need it. You can use it for retraining. You can use it for all of that. It's kind of, it's, it's rare. Um, any Element Zero planet is just worth doing and getting all of the resources that we possibly can from there. We have one more planet that we can find, which is yet another 
a planet called Thanusi, which is also a element rich planet. If we check our journal real quick, we can see anomalous weather detected. Anomalous weather patterns are planet, uh, whatever, canalis <laughs> in the Dorada system. Pylos Nebula, another in seven mission that we can go ahead and tackle. Before we land on Canalis, I also want to point out just how beautiful this sun looks in Dorada, or the Dorada sun looks so cool. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and we're going to land on Canalis, and it's very important for this mission uh, to select people that can deal with synthetics, because we are going to be dealing with Geth for the first time, really, well, it feels like the first time in a long time uh, that we're going to be dealing with them. And of course, we're going to bring Tally and Garrus for their overload abilities. Uh, Miranda's fine with warp, I just think it's fun to bring Tally and Garrus as often as we can. We bring uh, we bring Miranda to everything because she's so good. Also, the arc projector is going to be incredibly useful on this mission. The main theme of this mission naturally is going to be smog because as you can see, well, you can't. <laughs> you can't see much. So we're just going to have to uh, do our best to get through here without getting smoked and smacked and all of the stuff that happens here. We'll find that there is a bunch of different stuff. Looks like a flare lighting our way. Can't see anything. So if we do run into the Geth, they will have the one up on us considering they have systems that allow them to see us. We can't see them. However, their flashlights are pretty darn noticeable. So we're going to immediately take out this Geth Troop, her, and this one as well. Seeing that we are absolutely wrecking them, we'll notice that there's a Prime there as well. And we'll go ahead, we'll overload this one, uh, wait for our charge, get this one, and we'll go ahead and drone. Getting the drone out. And then we can start attacking the hunter, which should be able to get toasted pretty quickly. We'll go ahead and just melee the Geth Hunter to death because we can, because we're, uh, you know, a vanguard. Taking down this Geth Trooper as well uh, while he's on the ground. We can finish him off. Look at that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Look at these flares. How nice of them. See this Geth thing in the background making weather? I don't even... Why? So we actually want to head back to, now that we've kind of uh, dealt with that first wave of enemies, we're going to head back to the shuttle because there's actually some resources and whatnot that we can gather here. It's so hard to see anything, but there is palladium, in fact. We'll see, we'll start finding it right over here. We'll find some refined palladium. You kind of have to use your, your uh, that little thing that appears when there's something to click on, you know? You're going to have to use that a little bit, but... If we come over here to the left of our shuttle, we'll be taken up onto this ridge here where we can find more palladium. So that's 300 palladium and yet another one, which is uh, 400 total and another one here, which we can find for 500 palladium total. I believe we've gotten all of the palladium that we can find here. It's so hard to see literally anything, but we're going to continue back to where we just fought all of those, all of those geth. I don't believe there's any more palladium there because there's a cliff on that side, so we don't have to worry about that. We're going to keep up and just keep an eye out for any of these minerals that we might be able to find as we proceed towards this, this facility that the Geth seem to be using to create this weather effect. Up here on this ridge where these flares are, we can hopefully find more palladium. So hard to find anything, but we will be able to find a more palladium, 200 palladium, that we were able to pick up there right after where we just destroyed the two Geth hunters and a bunch of the troopers. Again, keeping an eye out for this palladium. Again, it doesn't really matter if you miss it. I just, you know, don't like missing anything. So we get more palladium there. So that's another 200. Keeping an eye out. Looks like we saw something potentially. More palladium on this side of where that flare is. So hard to see. But of course, that's, that's the point of the mission. Continuing down this path here. Looks like we found another icon that we can click on something over here for more palladium, 200. And the path actually forks here, so we want to make sure that we are exploring both paths, finding all of the items that we possibly can, which should be a, a 200 palladium there and 200 palladium on the other side. It looks like they converge over here as well. Keep an eye out for Geth flashlights on their head, telling us where they are at any time, which is pretty useful for us. We can also find that there's a little area over here that has yet more palladium, so much palladium in this, this mission. It's actually kind of absurd. 
Especially when we have thousands, hundreds of thousands, and we just don't need that much more. Noticing that there is a Geth Destroyer ahead, we're going to go ahead and start Explosive Drone and going ahead and getting that shield ripped off as soon as we possibly can, taking care of these troops as well. Backing up so that we don't die. Let's see if we can go ahead and get a charge out on this Destroyer, sending him back and hopefully attacking these troops, getting that uh, charge back, attacking this one as well, and watching out for this Geth Destroyer so it doesn't destroy us. You know, because it's a destroy it's a Geth Destroyer. You get the idea. It does have a flamethrower because it's a Geth Destroyer, even though it's hard to see. I'm gonna go ahead and charge it again and finish it off with a nice explosion and deal with this trooper as well. We're gonna go ahead and charge that as I had so little health dealing with this Geth Trooper as well and charging that, keeping these charges active as much as possible so that we don't end up losing too much health here. Not that it really matters, because I think these are the only troopers we have left. We're going to go ahead and hop over this and take out this last trooper. I love the Matic. It is so, so powerful. Oh, feels so good. I was a little sketchy, though. I was, uh, that probably wasn't the best way to play that. Now that those are all dead, we actually did see a station that we could interact with as well while we got closer to that. But I want to make sure that we got all of the things that we can grab, which of course is just palladium, so who cares? Uh, but here we can access this geth device and make sure that the geth are done on this planet. And this, this device that they're using, whatever they're using it for, is destroyed. Another palladium kind of hidden on the ground there. Like I said, it's so hard uh, to make sure that you get everything in this mission. I'm going to be real with you. So I actually relayed my save before I used the Geth device uh, because I knew I was missing. I'm missing 200 Palladium. Uh, again, it is so hard to find everything here, but uh, you know me. I got to make sure that we find it. So I showed all of the ones that we can. Let's go ahead and see if I can find the last remaining uh, 200 Palladium that I'm missing. So right where we fought the first wave of enemies, there's like a, uh, a little bit of a, a dip on the far right or I guess left side if you're facing the enemies, there's a little dip on there, uh, which leads to a dead end. It's like a little bit of a hole, I guess, uh, that you can kind of drop down and that we can find the final palladium. So now that we have that, now we can access the terminal. Accessing this Geth device, let's see what happens to this climate change device that the Geth have, that's dangerous. And with that, we have recovered the Geth climate change technology, 125 experience, and more importantly, we got a shield upgrade that we can use the research computer to do 60% to shields, barriers, and armor, 7,500 credits, and the most amount of palladium that we can get, 2,000. I had to redo that mission just to get, well, I mean, I didn't redo it, but still needed that, that 200, even though it doesn't, literally doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and let's actually research that right away just to have it so you could do that mission a little bit earlier it's not very hard it's very easy uh and you can grab six out of six armor ten thousand uh palladium needed and there we go boom that is just that is just great unfortunately that didn't open up anything else for us but hey you know what i still love it i love it so much and back in the Dorada system, we're going to head to Satent so we can go ahead and clear that, get 100% everything in the Pylos Nebula before we save this crashing ship that has been save, uh, crashing for so long. We actually got that by buying a star system over on Helium. A star chart, I should say. Anyways, we'll find Boro. It's a young Volus uh, colony world settled in defiance of a threat by the Terminus pirate groups. And it is a rich planet full of element zero, my friends. The next planet we can find is Rhyceris, which is also rich, has a bunch of platinum, and as far as I know, a little bit of element zero. And right on the sun itself, we can find another planet. Rezcel is a massive hot Jupiter gas planet. It's not going to have much on it. Definitely no element zero. So who cares? The planet of Anidia is also another rich planet with a lot of resources but with no element zero. So I once again ask, what is the point? And finally, the last planet that we can find in the Satent system is another gas giant that we do not care anything about. And that's 100%. So that means we are going to the final system that we can go to 
in this cluster here. Which is going to be the Chrysoroi Chrysoro Chrysoro system. Most of the planets here are gas giants, uh, so we don't really care about those. However, we can find Nidus, which is uh, developed a limited native ecology. Much of its clusters are around geothermal vents. We can actually go ahead and scan this, which is going to be a moderate planet, uh, which is not really necessary, and it also doesn't have any element zero. So, like, who cares? But promising planet we have a what looks like Theonax, which what a cool name is a mil uh, a rich planet and hopefully has some element zero and it didn't the system sucks anyways let's finally head back to Nerif and go ahead and save this crashing ship which is a very short mission my friends so let's do it and let's knock this out real quick and oh, look at this thing the msv broken arrow scans detect a rapidly decaying derelict ship in orbit rapidly uh it's been decaying since we bought those star charts on helium hours and hours and hours ago high probability that the crash site will be far gone jonas's largest human colony geth signatures have been detected so this actually sounds like they're using it to destroy a colony Again, we're going to be dealing with Geth here, so we're going to bring a party of Tally and Garrus who are going to kick some butt! And we're going to use the same loadout as before. Alright, here we go. So we have less than five minutes to clear this entire area. So we're gonna go ahead and read this captain's log. We'll find out that there was a yellow alert because they're in Geth territory. They're super close to Geth territory. They were a little worried about it and they were afraid that, well, the crew would freak out, but the crew's fine because they have a hundred crates of military grade weaponry on board. Unfortunately, the Geth attacked. There was no way that they were going to be able to use all these but the colonies need those weapons. So they need to figure this out. And unfortunately, signing off captain thomas joner signed off should the geth succeed in capturing the ship they also gain control of the hundred crates of weaponry so he decided that he was going to crash the ship into orbit and it would self-destruct unfortunately he didn't think about it uh correctly and it's about to hit a capital city and self-destruct then which is you know probably worse so we're gonna go ahead and bypass this door and get ready for a geth attack on the other side of it hopefully we should be able to take it down no problem there's only three that we need to take care of, so we're going to go ahead and charge as soon as we can. We're going to go ahead and activate this, which will see navigation's offline, life support is offline, and engine status. We're going to go ahead and pop this one and charge this, get it out of the way, and go ahead and finish off these geth as quickly as we can, getting our shields back even though we were totally fine. Watching out for this one as well as it reactivates its shields. We can grab this med station, and then there also should be some iridium. Uh... Where's the iridium? Right here, we can find you find refined iridium, kind of hidden. 1,200 credits there. So we need to activate the power of this ship and see if we can get it from plummeting to the the Jonas, the, the capital city here. We'll find that there is a power coupling engine control right there that we can't restart. We also need to watch out because we are about to be dealing with a ton of enemies that will actually just keep approaching while we're trying to get across here. So we need to watch out for that. Take these guys down when we can. Grab this Iridium, because there's 800 there, meaning we got 2,000. We're gonna go ahead and activate this, hopefully without being interrupted, which unfortunately we were. We're gonna get in a cover here, wait for our shields to regenerate just a bit. We're actually gonna go ahead and pop this explosive drone here as well, uh, which will hopefully allow this to activate. We'll get that power coupling heading, and then we'll get back into cover, wait for our shields to respawn dealing with this enemy the whole time we're going to go ahead and overload it and that will allow it to be stunned for a second so that we can run across we have four minutes until impact we're going to go ahead and grab this coupling as well now this is an infinite wave of enemies so we want to watch out for those if you're an infiltrator you'll be just fine because you can you can kind of tactical cloak through the entire thing so we're going to run we're getting smacked we're totally fine and we can restart the controls right here by bypassing by bypassing this by passing this and then we can hopefully get these engines back online. And hopefully, we don't have to worry about it. That should do it. 
And we were able to stabilize the broken arrow. Uh, broken arrow. The remaining Geth have disengaged. And the colony is safe. 125 experience, 7,500 credits, and 2,000 iridium. Cerberus funded that entire mission. 7,500 credits. Man, how delicious is that? So, that is everything that we can do in that nebula. Which means that we can now use the mass relay. Maybe check to see how we are on fuel. We're good. Uh, we'll buy a few probes because we can. We just got some moolah. Uh, and we are ready to go to the next area that we can. So the Pylos Nebula is 100% completed. Everything else that we can see is pretty much a area that needs uh, that that has other quests for us. So the only two systems that we have is the Kellison Rift and the Hades Nexus. So let's hurry up and head to the Kellison Rift and let's see if we can 100% it before this episode gets way too long. But I want to get it all done as fast as possible. The Balor is done, so let's go ahead and head to Acer here. Actually, we'll go to Talava, Talava and we'll go around. We'll make a circle. Anomaly detected. And on the moon or the planet Titus, which is a desert of whitish potassium uh, salts, unregistered starships have been spotted in the vicinity. So we're going to go ahead and scan this and immediately find that it's a, not only a rich planet, but there's also an anomaly that we are going to need to take care of. Because don't forget, we are the heroes of this story. Scans have found something. Surface scans detect one Ymir heavy mech signature matching an unknown, possibly pirate, registration. Mech appears to be disabled, but broadcasting broad uh, a message. So we have investigate the mech signal. The only resources that we can find here is no element zero, which means I don't really care about scanning this planet. And if we look at our journal real quick, we will see that there is this investigate mech signal. So let's go ahead and do this for one of the shortest side quest missions and perhaps one of the easiest that we will encounter in the entire game. So let's go ahead and let's land on Titus so that we can go ahead and uh, and do this very fast in seven mission. In fact, this is another one that speedrunners will do so that they can proc the next story based event. Literally doesn't matter who you bring here. So we are going to go ahead and bring a party of Jack and Thane. Sure, why not? Sounds good to me. We haven't seen them in a little while. Go ahead and uh and yeah, let's just let's just do it. Doesn't matter what we bring for weapons, and let's land. And we can go ahead and pick up these power cells as soon as we get there. And those power cells are not the power cells that you think they are. In fact, they're actually used to activate this disabled mech. Piece of shit. So let's go ahead and let's activate this mech. The way this mission works is actually super, super simple. So we're going to go ahead and activate the mech, who is then going to start excavating these resources. So we are going to try to stay around it as much as we can. We're not seeing any other power cells over here, but we are finding this data pad. I paid Herit good money for this useless heap. Uh, Herit is Herit's Emporium on uh, Omega. But basically, all right, I said, sure, the thing leaks fuel like a volus. So I took off and laid out a rail of tra uh, of power cells leading from where I unloaded the mech so I could at least get the thing moving and now won't even move. So uh, unfortunately, it looks like somebody stole it. So we're going to keep just activating it as it goes. Power remaining. We're going to go ahead. It's going to activate this wall here. Come on, mech. You can do it. And we'll just continue on. You can see that it's got a bunch of power there remaining and we'll proceed as we go and we'll, all we need to do is put power cells back in it as it goes that's pretty much all we need so we can go ahead and pick up this power cell as well now that we have that and we can go ahead and i don't know what you're attacking buddy but i don't what are you doing don't know why don't know why you're doing that And reactivate, put the power cell in, and we'll just keep going. 
running through ahead of the Varen. Again, we're or a Varen. Uh, we're going to be running ahead of the Ymir mech, who's about at half power, and we're going to be looking for power cells, making sure that we get them as quickly as we can. You'll also notice that we have two Varen that are sitting over here. Uh, that's why I said Varen, because I was thinking about the Varen, who are actually just hovering over uh, one of the power cells that we need, which is, you know, annoying. We'll go ahead and... I was trying to... There we go. There is yet another power cell over here that we can grab. Now that the Varen are destroyed, they were actually sitting over one. So we'll go ahead and grab this and put it back over. Again, this is a very fast mission, my friends. The mech is powered down, so we just need to go ahead and run and put it back in. That's it. That's 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 the only enemies we encounter in this entire mission. Uh, it's pretty simple. We're already halfway through. If anything, it's a little boring, so go ahead and skip to the next power cell location, which is actually right in front of us. And once we get to the end... Uh-oh. Oh, good. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Uh -oh. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, good job, Ymir Mech. Anyways, we'll find 5,000 platinum uh, that will then be added to our inventory. But more importantly, we will also get uh, 7,500 credits for doing this little side quest. Recovered buried cache of resources, Ymir Mech unsalvageable. We get 125 experience, 7,500 credits, and 5,000 platinum. The only th other thing of interest here in the Talava system is the planet Matrum. Matrum is actually home to 5,000, uh, 500,000 prisoners uh, on Matrum, which is you know, kind of a lot. It's a Turian Armed Forces Maximum Security Center. So, uh, it's also a rich planet that you can scan. No Element Zero or anything like that. But if you want some Iridium, uh, this is a wonderful planet, I guess, to scan. Now that this system is 100% complete, we are going to head to the next system that we can do here in this, uh, one of the last, the Celeston Rift areas. And heading to Solvig, we will find the planet Surtur which is also a rich planet that we can go ahead and scan and find some platinum and palladium if that's what you need. However, there's also a tiny little moon, Sinmara. Surtur's moon Sinmara that also, my friends, has a, well, anomaly that we can detect here. Solar radiation seems to be happening. Planetary scans indicate the Sinmara colony is vulnerable to its sun's hazardous solar flares. Shield must be reactivated. So let's go ahead and let's land here so that this place doesn't get destroyed. That would be no bueno. All we need to do is activate the magnetic shield. If we look at our journal, we'll see the endangered research station. Uh-oh. All we need to do here, you'll notice we are alone because there is no... There's... It literally doesn't... You just... Listen, you just come out. You do what you got to do. You get this broken generator here that you can salvage for 2,000 palladium. You run across yet another really fast mission that you can do. You go ahead. You bypass this central station here. And now that that's done... We can head inside and hopefully fix this thing. You'll notice that there's a control switch. We have cooling units, a shield generator, and on over there, a shield control. So the first thing that we're going to do is use the control switch twice. Which is going to allow us to now use the cooling unit. Turning on the cooling unit, making sure that that is active. We are then going to go ahead and use the control switch to the shield generator on this side here. So cooling, shield generator... And now back to the shield. Whoa. The shield control. We'll go ahead and activate that by bypassing this. That's it. That's. I, 
I, listen, I don't, anyways, we restored it. Credit reward transferred from Simara uh, Colonists. They paid us for doing that, 125 credits, 7,500 credits, uh, or 125 experience, 7,500 credits for that. It says credits found. Uh, I'm guessing that's from the colonist is, is kind of how they're putting it. And of course, 2,000 palladium. My friends, probably the easiest and fastest side quest in the entire game. You just saw it happen. What would you do without me, dear viewer? You'd be lost. You'd be like, how do I... How do I complete that, that quest? We get another one to the Normandy. Our thanks. This is the governor of the Fragone colony on Jonas. They retrieved uh, our identity from the docking data aboard the MSV Broken Arrow, and they found out that we defeated the Geth and also uh, saved nearly 100 munitions crates and uh, stopped them from all dying. So, you know what? They're welcome, is what I'm hearing there. And that means we are now done with Sorvig, and we can head to the last system that we have here, which is going to be the a Sur system. I love the names here, my friends. Very cool, very Norse. We have the notable planet of Sheer here, which is another rich planet, but it doesn't have any element zero. So if you're like me, you're probably gonna skip it. This is a gas giant Dranon that has 44 moons, which I just think is cool. And a very little tiny planet that we can find here is Shasu. Uh, it is a relatively temperate and also another rich planet. And finally, the last planet that we can find is Agnin, which again is just going to be a rich planet with some platinum and iridium, but no element zero. But that means that this entire area, this entire system is now done. Look at that. You love seeing that 100%. You know what I'm saying? It's just... It's just delicious. And yeah, it's costing some money to do all this, but whatever. It wouldn't be a Missile Dine Online playthrough if it wasn't 100% complete. So we're going one more to the Hades Nexus. And this, my friends, is going to be the last place that we can go to that isn't a main story quest or a DLC or anything like that. We still have Project Overlord. Uh, uh, the We still have the actual story that we need to do itself. Um, so this is... This is a good time to get all of this done. So we're going to head out of here and start heading to the other systems that we can do in the this Hades Nexus. Uh, is that what it's called? Hades Nexus. Yeah. So we have Sheol and Pamyat that we're going to head to. Now, it is worth mentioning that we do have some loyalty missions that are uh, left to do. And as we arrive in Sheol, we will find that there's only one planet for us to scan. And this one, my friends, armed conflicts have broken out between miners and scientists taking claims to Prothean ruins. So this place apparently has some Prothean technology maybe on board. Uh, and also, of course, it's rich. And more importantly, it has an anomaly on it. Well, let's go ahead and scan this because it also has some element zero, baby! Surface scans show evidence of a shipwreck meeting quarry and design specifications. Local wildlife may interfere with accuracy of biological scan. Well, let's see. If there's element zero, there might still be some more that we can find. And there sure is. Also, something kind of cool about this is that the gay hinnom, guy hinnom, uh, it literally means the Valley of Hanam in Hebrew, but is translated as hell in the New Testament of the Bible. I just think that's an interesting name for a planet. Actually, I think that's the theme for most of the Hades Nexus uh, systems here that we can get. And you can get about 6,300 credit, uh, 6,300 element zero, by the way, by scanning this planet or probing this planet. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to land on this Valley of Hanam, this Valley of Hell, if you will. And we're going to bring a party of Tally, uh, because this is a Quarian ship after all, and Grunt, because we're going to be dealing with, uh, actually, we're going to be dealing only, really, with Varen this entire time. So we're going to make sure that we bring them and we're going to show these Varen what up. I think we can take a few Varen, my friends. We are, after all. We're going to go ahead and read this personal log. Commence pilot's record. Managed to escape the Geth's notice thanks to some clever work in silencing Sinead's engines. The strain on the old ship was too much. Our reports show that this isn't extremely likely to find a, uh, a friendly spot here. 
they are close to the Perseus Vale. That's where the Geth are from. Well, where the Quarian and the Geth are from. The landing was rough. Managed to salvage from the wreckage the things we'd need to survive. Unfortunately, Lieutenant Commander Gorlet didn't make it, leaving me the senior officer in charge. And missing survivors. They don't know who or what is taking them, but they've now lost more than half of the crew who survived the crash. Hope to build a camp here to survive until the Edena found our beacon, but something is hunting us being the Varen, of course. Now, we'll also notice that there is a med kit here that we can grab for 100 credits. That was the personal logs that we could find. And there is also a refined palladium, palladium here that we can grab 2,000 of it, by the way, which is quite a decent chunk. Noticing that there's a little camp here, but it looks like, well, things didn't end well for these people. And very quickly, we're going to come across somebody that's going to need our help. Hopefully soon. Looks like there's a dead quarry in here. Dead Varen here, and we'll find Forzon Vas Adena. Let's go ahead and stabilize her and see if we can help out. Quarian life signs are stabilized. I recommend securing the area in preparation for shuttle extraction. So, the first thing that I would recommend doing is putting our quarry, our tally, and our tally, you know what I'm saying, our tally and our uh, uh, grunt on top of the quarian which will hopefully protect a little bit. And then we're going to attack these Varen as they come out. And we want to stay on top of them as much as we can because in fact, these guys can overwhelm you incredibly quickly. Now, the threat here is not actually to us at all. In fact, we'll be totally healthy. It's to the Quarian itself, which is why we put them on top so that hopefully we don't have to deal with, unfortunately, the Quarian getting attacked does half of its damage just like that. So we're going to go ahead and knock these out. The important thing here is to not run out of ammo. If you run out of ammo, odds are that Quarian is dead. So we're going to keep attacking it as much as possible. We're going to send out the explosive drone when we can and hopefully take these out as much as possible while also kind of delaying them by using tactics. Uh, uh, anything that is going to stun them. Melee helps uh, if you start running low. The shuttle has arrived, so we need to go ahead and get out of here. The Varen are destroyed. Just like that, we were able to do almost all of it. We're going to keep this going as much as we can, allowing these uh, to hopefully stop us. Hello? Thank you. And finally, we can go ahead and board the shuttle. I also want to take a moment real quick just to say that uh, we just heard about the Quarian ships Adina and Sinead. Um, and those are actually incredibly important to a story, uh, a, a Mass Effect novel called Mass Effect Ascension, by the way, uh, which I would recommend if you've never read that. I, it's really great. Um, you'll you'll notice uh, there's there's some really cool things there. The Ascension novel focuses on Paul Grayson and his daughter Jillian Grayson, who is a biotic prodigy, and Cerberus actually trying to use her, and kind of what happens from then. So, highly recommend if you want a, a little bit more backstory on um, on uh, uh, not only the elusive man, but also somebody known as Paul Grayson, who will never actually meet in the game. So, let's go ahead and board the shuttle. I just think it's cool that they added that. And just like that, we have leveled up. We are now level 26. We have found and extracted a Quarian survivor and notified the Adena of Sinead's scout ship location. We got 7,500 credits and 2,000 Palladium. What's really interesting to me is uh, the novel in Ascension, uh, Cerberus actually attacks the Adena and sets up the scout ship, the Sinead. They wire it with explosives that are supposed to actually uh, rip a hole through a through the the, the main ship and cripple her. Um, but luckily, a couple of the Quarian are able to manage to disable it in time. 
Anyways, we will receive a new message from doing that from Captain Yisan Mal, who is actually, I, I don't believe, the captain in the novel. Please accept my sincere appreciation for your efforts in locating the wreckage of the Sinian. That ship has a storied history with both the migrant fleet and Cerberus. And we are pleased to know that the wreckage can be salvaged by my people. In finding and stabilizing Lieutenant Forzen, you have returned to the flotilla one of her newest and most honored heroes. But we're not done exploring yet, my friends. Gosh, I hope this episode isn't too long. It's been a long... It's, it's a lot of footage. So we're going to head to Pamyat here. And immediately upon getting there, we can explore this asteroid and find Volkov. The planet of Patsyev is another rich, mineral-rich planet with iridium, platinum, and palladium. Komarov is another mineral-rich planet with iridium, platinum, and palladium. But unfortunately for us, no element zero. And finally, the last planet that we can find in this entire nebula, Drovolovsky, Drovolovsky, which we can go ahead and scan this. It is another rich planet and a little bit of element zero. And now that we have a whopping 70,000 element zero, we are done with this planet. We're done with this system. We are done with the Hades Nexus entirely. That's pretty cool. However, if we head to the Phoenix massing system, there we won't be able to get 100% for this yet because we're not going to be doing Project Overlord just yet. Uh, however, there is a system over here, Sally Heal, that we're going to head to real quick. We're not going to go to Typhon at all uh, until we uh, tackle Project Overload, uh, Lord. Instead, we're going to head over here. There's only one planet that we can find, and that is Ikuna. The Quarians seeking a homeworld for their own petitioned the Citadel Council to the right to take over Ikuna. But they had already, uh, but they had already settled a few hundred thousand quarians on the planet before approaching the the council, and the council saw that as a uh, an illegal activity. This is also a rich planet that has element zero, which means Salahiel is now a hundred percent done. So we're going to leave that, and we'll come back to Typhon another day, which is actually going to be soon, my friends, because we really don't have that much more that we can possibly do. But we're going to leave that, and instead, there was another one that we can actually go to, which is the Hawking Ada system. And again, we don't want to do the Reaper IFF yet, because if we do, that starts a countdown to the end of the game, and we still have loyalty missions and all this other stuff to do, so we're not going to worry about that now. However, there is a system, a uh, Sentry, that we can head to now, and go ahead and 100% that. And then we also have, after that, one more system that we can do here, and that will be it for this area until we acquire the Reaper IFF. We have the mineral-rich planet of Cantra. No element zero. Tamahera, which also has no element zero. Clindagon, which we actually have heard about in the first Mass Effect. There was a giant uh, uh, crater on Clindagon that was actually caused by a mass accelerator round of unimaginable destructive power 37 million years ago, which we know potentially was on the last Reaper cycle. And that is all that we can find in the system of Century. So we're going to head to the final one that we can get in this area, at least without doing any of the main quest, which is called um, uh, Swar Swarv's Child. Swar Swarv's Child. Swar I don't know. And interestingly enough, we have the planet of Edemus. Now, I really love this because you saw that Clindagon was hit and that was a system over, but then Edemus was also, it was a super terrestrial world, a third larger than Earth. It is a post garden state that clearly shows evidence of attack from space. It is now waterless. The shores of the ocean show patterns of cratering too regular to be anything but saturation bombardment by dreadnought class kinetic weapons. It's unclear how most of the atmosphere has been lost. Archaeologists found little of note. It's been there for so long. The few relics found suggest an advanced spacefaring culture thrived on the world somewhere between 20 and 40 million years ago. 37 million years ago was when the crater on Clindagon was created. The level of antiquity makes it impossible to estimate the world's former population or guess whether it was the race's homeworld or a colony, which is very cool to me. It is a good world that has some element zero, actually quite a bit. And finally, the last planet we can explore is Atahil, which we can go ahead and check this out. It is a rich planet, but with no element zero. And that, my friends, is every system that we can possibly explore right now that doesn't have to do with a main story quest or a loyalty quest or a DLC mission. Uh, that is it. That is absolutely everything, which is pretty wild. And I can't believe that we're already there. Now, we do have some credits that we could spend. For instance, if we head to Tuchanka, 
we can go to Fortex database and buy the heavy pistol this damage, which will give us four out of five damage on that. And that, my friends, is everything that we can potentially do right now. The only things that we have left in our assignments tab is Citadel found forged IDs, which we can't do until after Thane's loyalty mission, Arrival, and Overlord, which are two DLCs that we'll be doing. Arrival will not happen until a long time from now. And also, obviously, we have our main story, Stop the Collectors, but then we have these four quests here. We're not going to be doing tallies yet, so the next loyalty missions that we have are Jacob's, Jack's, and Thane's. And the next one that we're doing is going to be Jacob's loyalty mission, The Gift of Greatness, in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. It has been uh, a, a, a huge amount of time putting into getting all of these side quests done. Hopefully the episode isn't too incredibly long, uh, but we were able to get so, so much done. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out to those of you supporting the channel over on Patreon.com com slash missile online still and uh just so you know i'm streaming over on twitch.tv slash missile online thursday friday saturday we're playing a lot of final fantasy 14 uh we're going to be starting uh some more horizon forbidden west streams right here on youtube and i would love to see you guys there thank you for watching oh and leave a comment below letting me know have you ever 100 percented this game have you ever done every single side quest i uh i have and it it's it's quite a bit we're like 46 hours in thank you so much for watching never give up never surrender bye everyone